show recording begins right now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. And today it is talk time. So we are going to talk with someone that a lot of you already know. And I think this may be one of our first show appearances. So that's going to be fun. And uh, before we get going, let's talk to our person in the cold frozen tundra. <laughs> hey, Don, how are you? It is kind of cold frozen tundra today. I'm well, thanks. Glad to be home. And Ooh into you live and in person this week and I want to say a special thank you to Tom for filling in for me last week. Well yeah I just realized that when I did your lower third it came up as Tom so let me fix that real quickly while you're talking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, he, he likes the extra exposure. He I'm did. Sure. Tom, Tom that was really sneaky of you putting your name in there. <laughs> <laughs> that the art of self-promotion. It is. So. Hey Tom would you like to introduce our guest? I'd love to introduce our guest. So um um, she is a fellow Coloradian. Is that how you say that, maybe? Um, it yeah. lives minutes from Gina Schreck, but she's my friend from Twitter first. And then we met in person last year at an international conference, and I'm so excited to have Lisa Goldstein with us today. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for that awesome introduction, Don. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. We have to catch up on your trip to Nashville, too, by the way, offline. Oh, okay. yeah, absolutely. It's a so fun city. Big, Oh, Fiona just checked in online, too. Great. Hi, Fiona. Hi, Fiona. Uh, the big request was if you met John, what color were his socks and his necktie? John who? I did not get to meet John. It was um, a very full week, and um, um, but we did a lot of chatting over the phone, so... Oh, okay, good. And we John had... is a, um, a director in my company. Oh, ah, okay. I was hoping to connect the two of them. Uh, because he's got strong ASTD connections there. Well, we so. finally got to meet Lisa in person. I think we bumped into her about three times, had a, had a couple of sit-downs, and it was fun. Yeah, that was a good time. It's always That's too quick. It's a great quick. facility, too. And it's always too quick, though. You notice all the sit-downs are quick. Everybody's just rushing from one place to another and, and getting dragged from one place. But it was, it's a good show. That's one of my favorite shows. It is. And, it, and the time really does fly by. <laughs> it's a nice it flies by when you're having fun. It's a nice venue, except for Downtown <laughs> Disney, which is just insanity pure insanity we went there uh, for dinner one night i think it took four hours total to finally get dinner and get out we couldn't find a place everything's so uh, plus it was spring break yeah i was gonna say and, the time every time here. you ask um the host they say oh it's it's just 30 minutes 30 minute wait right and yeah right. three hours later yeah you know, 30, 30 minutes, minutes from right. two hours from now yeah yeah they're trained to say that <laughs> well lisa you announced at the show that you are now working with the e-learning guild I am. That's I great. Now work for the Evening Guild. Hey. Hey. I'm really excited about that. That's good. And I know you're working on secret projects. Can't say much about them at this point, but um, we're looking forward to hearing what secrets you've got in store You know, for us. I think it's going to be really exciting and it's going to impact a lot of people. Um, I can't say a lot about it, but uh, I'm going to be helping running an awards program for the Guild. Cool. And I think there's a lot of unsung heroes in our industry. There's a lot of people who have a lot of contributions uh, and a lot of accomplishments. Um, and I think that this program is going to do a lot to really help to provide a forum to allow that next generation of thought leaders to become identified and to, to recognize those individuals. So I think it's going to be a really exciting program. Well, that sounds fun. And um, yes. <clears throat> I know we're going to be down at DevLearn um, in October. And I think we're actually going yes. to M MLearn in is M M Learn July or June. I'm trying to remember. I want to go to MLearn. But it's, in I, you know, it it's in June. It is in June. Yeah, so we'll in be at San we'll, Jose. <clears throat> we'll be at MLearn. So that'll, that'll be fun. That's, I think, my second time I've been. I went there the first time when it was really just a teeny show. I think less than 200 people or about 200 people. So I guess now they're over 1,000. That's pretty... Well, I'm glad you're going because that means that's one more opportunity to see you. I'll oh, you're, you're going to be there? Great. We'll see I you am. then. <clears throat> That'll be fun. I'll put that on my goal list for next year. Yes. <clears throat> It'll be good. That's going to be an exciting one. What do they do it? Is it at the Aria again? Um, no, it's in San Jose. Oh, sorry. San Jose. Okay. Yeah. At the convention center? Um, I believe so. You know, I, I should know the answer to that question, but I'll, I'll need to look that I up. Mean, that'll be fun. <clears throat> That will be fun. Well, today you're going to talk about how to really run and survive and thrive 
in a one man or woman e-learning Yes, you know, that, that's my um, last life. I um, was in my last job, I was running a, um, an e-learning department for a, a significant sized company in the automotive industry. Um, and in the um, industry for employees, or in the, I'm sorry, in the uni university for employees, I had 15,000 learners. And then we also are running customer universities, um, which is um, helpful to customers, but it, it's also creative marketing. And it's, you know, it's a wonderful program where we had you know, thousands of customers in these, you know, in, in each of these dozen universities. Um, and, and so it was a very busy job. Uh, there was a lot to accomplish. And we were in multiple countries like uh, Canada where they have language police in Quebec. So we had to offer material in, in French Canadian. So we had uh, uh, material in French Canadian. We had material in Spanish. Um, and we had, um, in, a, in a time span of six years, we put together... Um, a catalog of 300 plus courses. So it was a lot to accomplish and I was able to look back on all those projects and feel really proud about them and uh, we, we accomplished a lot in a, in a small period of time and I did that technically for six years I was the only person on payroll. Wow. So you know it's about um, you know finding those efficiencies and how do you thrive in that environment. Now just out of curiosity just from a techie perspective mm -hmm. what kind of tools were you using? In, um, in for me, I used a lot of different kinds of tools. I mean, it, it depends on, on, on what question you're asking. Um, if like you development mean, tools, like development tools. Articulate, you know, were always my favorite uh, because of, you know, how quickly you could develop with them. Um, I, I was using Story, uh, not Storyline, um, Studio for a long time with Presenter, um, you know, with all the other tools that came inside of um, the studio. Um, but then I really started getting into Storyline because, um, you, you know, I think that in their marketing, they actually, you know, market that tool and talk about how it raises the glass ceiling and the possibilities of what you can do um, with e-learning development. And it, and it really is so true. I mean, with Storyline, anything you can imagine, you know, you can pretty much create with that tool. So that was a really exciting bit or reason for using that tool. That's great. So um, but, um, you know, using, you know, all the tools really have to be um, efficient. They can't hold you back. I mean, when you, when you need to have a good balance of... Um, Caution and speed. You know, you need you need caution so that you're you're doing it correctly. You know, you need that measure twice, cut once, um, and and then you need speed. And so none of your tools can slow you down. You need to make sure that um, you know that all the tools that you use allow you to work efficiently. So, what's one of the biggest things that you learned as a one-person show? Because it's tough being a one-person show. You're doing everything. It is. You know, I think the biggest thing is, regardless of your title. You need to act like a conductor. You need to you need to be the manager, whether or not your title says you're a manager or not. Um, you need to be able to leverage everyone around you who can you know play a part. You know all of your SMEs, all of your um, you know any vendors that you can utilize um, if you can contract any kind of work. Because even though you are a one man show, you are still only one person, and and therefore you can only do so much. So it's really important to you know, find those people who can partner with you. And, and the way that I verbalize it, you know, when, when talking to people who have a hard time letting go or thinking that they, they shouldn't let go of their duties, the way that, you know, I articulate it is to talk about, you know, giving away parts of your job as gifts. And and it's because the, of the people like this, your SMEs and coworkers and various departments, and you have to identify, you know, who those good partners are, whether it's marketing or, or you know, operations, um, identifying those people and giving parts of your job away as gifts because people do enjoy being involved. People people like the opportunity to give, and you know it's providing that that opportunity by giving away parts of your job. It's kind of like individuals who love to come to conferences and 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 talk about you know what what they specialize in. So a SME you know loves to be able to you know share their wisdom with others, and so to get them more involved than they might. Norm, you might normally have them involved is important. Well, and it's interesting because most SMEs actually really enjoy talking. They, they like do. talking about what they do, and then they like telling you what they do. And mm -hmm. if you make them feel like it's important, they really get into it. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's always a good thing. Make a friend of you, SME. Yes. 
And I bet um, the challenging part, I'm still blown away by the 300 courses and one developer, by the way, going back to where you began. Um, but the other thing is giving up control over their content. How, how did you do that? Letting go, saying good enough is good enough, that sort of thing. You know, it, it, it's really about making sure you have a good plan in the beginning. You know, you have to be careful that, you know, your job doesn't get away from you by not doing a good job planning. I think once you start to create some really solid guidelines for SMEs to work with and make it clear and easy and have a really good communication path, then I think you can accomplish a lot. And, and you can have multiple people working on multiple projects at once, whereas maybe your, your style might be, you know, start here, work, linear, work in a linear fashion, finish this project, and then I can start the next one. Versus if you have, um, you know, various subject matter experts and other people involved on various projects, then you have the capability of starting to juggle. And, and if you, as long as you have those clear guidelines set, you know, up front and, and a good communication practice and people know what they're doing and they know what's expected of them and they know the goals that you're trying to accomplish, then you can have, like I said, multiple projects going at the same time and you can juggle quite a bit and make a lot happen. Now, did you, know, you use any project sure. management tools? Um, I really enjoyed using OneNote. Now, I know there's a, a gazillion mm -hmm. products out on the market that you can use, but I liked using OneNote because um, you could have all these different notebooks and pages and things going that you would share with others and you could work real time on the same kinds of documents um, you know, if, if one person's typing and a second person's typing and a third person's typing, you see all three lines of text being entered simultaneously versus working from a spreadsheet or something like Microsoft Excel and throwing it up on Google Docs or, or some other cloud shared based environment where, you know, only one person can work on that document at once. That's oh, interesting. I, I did not know you could do that in no, one no. note. No, now you can do that in Google Docs, um, but. And it's kind of neat because you can actually see two people typing at once. I don't know if you can do more than two. I imagine that you can. But you know, yeah, it's funny. I, I've used one. You're saying about mm -hmm. Google Docs. The only thing is then you lose some of the power that you have in Microsoft right. Excel or, yep. or, or other Microsoft products. Google is fantastic with sharing. You're just limited to some of the functions that you can right. do just, inside of Google just Docs. just doesn't do as much. OneNote's actually kind of cool. I didn't realize that you could actually collaborate with people on it. That's, that's kind of neat. Hmm. Right. I didn't yes. realize that part of it. I'm going to be using that. I, you can tell I'm a power user on OneNote, right? <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> just like me. <laughs> I just got it. Yeah, Lisa, so. you've just made us both look really dumb. Really? You could do that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's what I know about Lisa, she grabs onto tools and goes crazy with them. Yeah, so. that's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Well, and, it, and it's important because I think that you, it's all about finding those efficiencies. You know, what, what gives you superhuman powers? You know, what, what makes you move faster than others? And, and finding those, that's really key. Yeah. What do you think the hardest thing was being a one-man show? And what, was, what did you find to be the easiest? You know, that's, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, for me personally, when I find something that's too hard, I overanalyze or, or analyze and analyze until I find the answer so it's not hard anymore. You know, I, I, I'm kind of that type of personality that doesn't settle for roadblocks very well. You know, I try to, you know, think and collaborate with others to try to figure out, you know, what, what can be done so that's no longer in the hard category. Um, and... Um, you know, so, so that's kind of a difficult, you know, question for me to answer. But really what made it easy really is to lean upon, you know, your, your network of people. And, and in addition to, you know, everything we've talked about so far with SMEs and, um, you know, other departments within the company, um, you know, obviously, you know, the community, obviously, you know, Twitter, um, the individuals who watch this show and contribute, you know, even in, in, inside of this, you know, window right here, you know, and, and how they contribute to the show here. Um, you know, your network on Twitter and Google Plus and all the different, in, in our Skype group. I mean, Dawn, how valuable has that Skype group been to you? Oh, I know. Bo both of our groups, they're awesome. And our, our Rebels um, tweet chats, can't say enough about that either, flash and, chatting. And, um, and just in case people who are watching, you know, you know have not used Skype in that way, um, you know, because I think sometimes when I describe it to others, they say, you know, I don't quite understand. You, you know, are you doing like a Google Hangout on Skype? What, what are you doing? And, and um, Skype has this wonderful instant messenger tool that's 
that's bigger and better than just instant messaging with one individual person. Uh, you know, you can have this group chat, and Don and I have been doing this group Skype chat with, you know, 25 plus people who will come in and, you know, it's a lot of fun small talk where you get to know a lot of people, but it, but primarily the, the real benefit there is, you know, anytime you run into any kind of challenge, you know, you can, you can talk with your, your PLN, you know, your group of friends there and, and ask them, what would you do in this challenge? And crowdsourcing ideas, I mean, that's valuable. We love it for that, if nothing else. And Meg and I were chatting about something separately yesterday, and on Friday, Fiona and I were chatting. Um, she helped me with a um, a lot, a big thing that I needed to do. So um, we we do like the crowdsourcing. That's how I think we became friends more than more than anything. We know, sharing ideas. It's a sharing um, environment. But that's one us. one good thing about the industry and, and this particular industry is that it is a very collaborative industry. People really work. I mean, for the most part, well together. And, and if you notice, everybody's always trying to help everybody else, which is also pretty unique. Um, having come from an IT background, it wasn't as prevalent. I, I, programmers will help you, but you pay for it sometimes. And it's a different mindset. And they're more engineer-like. Uh, trainers are a little more, well, actually a lot more empathetic. And givers. And givers, yeah. Well, they have to. I mean, just by the nature of teaching. Right. I have no compunction about saying that without um, a support group, from early in my career up to today, I wouldn't be where I am without people that have been willing to assist me and share. And I feel a very strong compunction to give back. So um, I hope people feel that way about the stuff I give. But I, I believe in that. I think that's what we're here to do. Absolutely. And, and it's amazing how our community comes together and, and forms relationships with each other. And we have this fantastic community of, of people and and you see that energy at conferences you see people really coming together and and forming these fantastic relationships you know that are so helpful you know both personally and professionally well I have friends all around the world that I wouldn't have any other way without Twitter you know it started there that's true Good three you know, four <laughs> years ago four years ago none of us knew anybody it's really interesting so <laughs> What year did Twitter actually start? 2008? Seven. seven or eight. Seven or eight, I'm not sure. It was a fairly early adopter, but I didn't have any Twitter people, and I didn't know what to do. But um, once I started contributing, it was amazing how many followers I got. Huh? I, I got on, I think, I think it's been at least four years, and, and I got on because of RJ Hackers. And, and I was going, Twitter, what a waste of time. Like, I, I don't have that kind of time to waste. It's just so stupid. Give me a break. I don't care what people had for lunch, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, mark my words. It's going to be good. So I was going, well, you know, he's, he's a pretty good seer. Well, one thing RJ had, he had a really good ability to see the future. He, he kind of had a knack for it. So I said, oh, what the heck? So I joined and started meeting people. I go, this is kind of fun. Uh, this is actually a blast. And before I knew yes. it, I met a whole mess of people that have become very good friends, uh, you know, current company included. And you just go, this is just absolutely cool. And, you know, half of us haven't even met in person, but you feel like you've got a real relationship. It's an abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. It you know, is. If you, if you approach it from that standpoint, I don't post my meals and so forth. Right, I don't right. feel the need to do that. Um, you That's know, unless I'm on rant about something. What were you going to say, Lisa? Oh, I was going to say the meals. That's what Facebook is for. That's right. That's what Facebook is for. <laughs> and Pinterest. And Pinterest, yeah. <laughs> I still have to check Rick's page on Pinterest. Actually. Oh, it's just, it's just sort of techie. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll have to check I couldn't it out. really figure out any real reason to use it. And Gina, was, Gina Shrek was challenging us. So uh, Larry Straining and I finally said, okay, fine. We'll create our print, print, Pinterest sites. And his was the best of all for about, a, I don't know, two, three months. It was just a blank page. Yeah. It was the most zen Pinterest page I've ever seen. It was, it was absolutely cool. It was totally existential, yeah. <laughs> I am, therefore I pin. Uh, so <laughs> it, was, uh, it was pretty neat. So I said, well, I've got to one-up them. So I created one with, I think, one item. And then um, eventually, I think we have a whole set. We put all the shows up. We did uh, gear and tech and some authoring tools. And, and we figured, okay, now what do we do? Of course, I never remember to pin. So it's just one of those... I think you have to have time and a mindset to pin. I haven't gotten there yet, but, but it's sort of fun. They said it's the second most, I guess, 
growing or popular network, which is really mind boggling. Well, it's crowdsourcing in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I think we're still learning how to use it uh, in that way. But it's very much of a visual medium. So uh, you have to be ready to have a visual component and share that and be okay that it gets shared and shared and shared and shared and shared. Yep. Yep. Not a lot of constraints and controls, which I like. Facebook is starting to really frustrate me again lately. So hmm. I haven't been on it as much. But that's boring. Let's talk about L&D Global Events. Yes. You know, that's, um, you know, quite another exciting place to see all sorts of content. I mean, there's, um, you know, so many blogs in our industry. It's amazing. Um, if you were to um, go to that L&D Resources tab um, in the middle of the page, I think we've collected, you know, well over 160 blog posts. Maybe wow. J JD's in the chat room. Maybe he can tell us, it, you know, what the final count now is on the Because he does help to... Um, collect a lot of those and he helps to populate the calendar. Um, there's a lot of resources on on, um, on this web page and that's really kind of where it was born. I think there was this you know overwhelming idea that there is so much in our industry. There's so many people giving in so many different ways with the back channel and blogs and there's events, there's webinars, there's tweets, there, there's tweet chats, there's um, conferences of all different flavors there's online forums you know for you know the kinds of conferences that you can go to so that you don't have to show up in a physical location but you know still it's a you know a three-day something event with you know all these online collections of webinars and speakers and so many different things that are out there for us you know to help us you know train the trainer type things and no one was really aggregating all that information in an easy to digest manner you know, I think that there, there's, there are still some other places where, you know, there's kind of, you'll find a, a streaming list of different kinds of events. But I think, as far as I know, unless, you know, I just haven't found it yet, I think this is the first and only of its kind that actually has a Google Calendar built in that you can subscribe hmm. to so that you can easily see, you know, even on your own calendar, you know, what's happening this week? What are, what are the cool events? What are all the webinars? What are all the conferences? What are the, all the everything's you know that that I can check out that's happening now that's and in the I, future I need to be better about going and checking it I, I put it need to put it on my calendar more often I do a quarterly look um, you know I make myself go quarterly and then I in between I go but I should put it like on a weekly or bi-weekly basis because there's good stuff out there there really is I mean there's so much I mean I, I mean you can't ever say in this industry that you're bored and there isn't something out there today or this week, you know, that, that can help sharpen your saw. There's constantly stuff out there. And, and, and even if there is a day or two where all of a sudden there really isn't a webinar or a conference today, well, there's 160, 200, and who knows how many blogs that are out there with really valuable content. I mean, there are just geniuses in our industry. I mean, thought so many people contribute. Thought leaders, it's, it's great. Absolutely. And it's in it's a contribution site. You have several people working on keeping it going, right? So mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. We um, so I initially partnered with um, Leslie Price, who's in the UK, and kind of the thinking at the time was, um, you know, I'll handle this side of the planet, you handle that side of the planet, since you're in the UK. And uh, you know, Leslie's been terrific with making sure I don't miss any of the events in the UK. That those definitely get populated on the calendar. So. She's been fantastic, you know, a really fun partner. We started this um, mid last year. And then uh, not, not too long afterwards, then JD jumped on the team. And JD's been making sure that, you know, everywhere across the world, you know, that we're covering all the different kinds of events and uh, that uh, they all get populated into the calendar. And, you know, he helps with our Twitter account. Um, to help tweet out those events, you know, as they're being added and things that are coming up. I need something to pound me over the head to get my uh, proposals in on time. That's my. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think that do I, and write and then get them in on time. I, I think JD's been starting to populate some of that into the calendar. I think he's starting to, in addition to just the events, but it's the call for speakers. Go JD! Well, you could be my personal assistant. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then we started saying, well, how can we take this even further? You know, now um, 
you know, people are going to all these different kinds of events. You know, sometimes when, um, you know, w when you go to ASTD or eLearning Guild or all these different conference sites, you know, just trying to see, okay, what, you know, what are the highlights? What are the top ten things I need to make sure that I hit when I go to these events? Because what's great about these conferences, again, you don't have the opportunity to be bored. In any hour block, there's 50 things going on. And so it, sometimes it's nice to also highlight what are the top ten things that you want to make sure you don't miss when you go. And so a lot of our blog posts have been on that topic, you know, top 10, top 14, top, you know, whatever, um, different events or, or different things not to miss when you attend those conferences. Well, and it kind of prevents you from having overload, but also it's another way to curate the back channel, right? Exactly. So, um, and, and a place to go and refer to the back channel uh, information, which I appreciate because I don't go to many conferences in the year, during the year. Yeah, and, 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 and those posts usually include, you know, information on the back channel. You know, here's where you go. You know, usually, usually pointing to David Kelly's site. You know, since he's the king of curation. He's it. The no, king no, of, king no. of back channel. Now, speaking of David, he also now works for the eLearning Guild. He which, does. Which I just he, found out at the show. I think that was his. He was starting either that week or the next week. Oh yeah, you know, it's it's funny. He's been he's been one of my role models for a while. So now that I get to call him my coworker, that's pretty cool. Well, congratulations to David too. Absolutely, we'll have to have David on the show too. Yeah, it's been a while. We'll have a whole guild thing. We'll have Patty. We'll have David. It'll be great. Yeah, well, Patty is scheduled somewhere in May. Oh, okay, good, awesome. We're, we're cool. trying to come up with the date because we had one date, but she may be at the Lectora conference that date. So we'll have, we'll figure out if we have another one. Okay. So she we'll should have, be on again. Know, sp sprinkle in the the guild all along the line. Yep. Yep. I like the it's guild. Good crew. Leva just joined us, so we'll say a on-air um, welcome to her as well. And um, there were a few questions out in the chat about um, tools, if you want to migrate back there. Um, questions about storyline and so forth. I don't know if you've been able to keep track of those, Lisa, as you've been um, going along. But, um, it's rolling up right now. Okay. So... Um, there's been discussion on storyline itself, and you know we don't need to go down the road of um, pro or con or so forth. But um, why was that your tool of choice most recently? I guess um, I'll just ask the question that way. And and just checking, you said storyline, right? Yes, yeah, storyline, huh? I just because um, you know I had well for starters, you know I I had become a loyal articulate user just because of you know just how wonderful their tool is. It it you know, I found it to be practically error-free, you know, and, and again, you know, I don't like to be slowed, slowed down by tools that, you know, have challenges, and I did not find many challenges with Studio. And not only that, but the community that they have is fantastic. I mean, I can't think of many tools out there that have such a wonderful community where the moment you have a question, you're almost guaranteed that within 24 hours, you'll have five different kinds of answers to that, five different helpful kinds of answers you know, to those questions yeah, that you're and 24 asking. hours is probably long. They're really quick oh, yeah. about that. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, and, and so I found that that helped me, you know, to, you know, I'll just, I'll just use their phrase that they coined, you know, it helped me to be an e-learning hero. You know, it helped me to, you know, wear that cape and, and move really quickly. I think, too, that um, how often do we really get the opportunity to be part of the development of a software tool and there are all those questions and all those posts and people sharing it's another sharing and collaborative environment um, the community the blog so forth um, you know Adobe does that on a, on a different type of scale but we help are helping to shape that um, that community and shape how the tool will look in the future which is pretty exciting stuff Absolutely. And Don, you know, I'm really good at tangents, so I'm really good at distracting myself, so I never really fully answered the question. I started to, and then I got distracted. But to, an <laughs> but to answer the question about why Storyline, you know, I think Studio and Presenter, th those, you know, that package is really wonderful if you um, really want to move very quickly and um, really has a very short learning curve. I think Storyline has a longer learning curve only because it's so much more powerful. So where, where Presenter might eventually provide some kind of ceiling for you in your development capabilities, I think Storyline releases that ceiling. 
and again, you know, whatever you whatever you can dream up, you can probably create with Storyline. And, and that's why I like and promote the, the idea of using that tool. Now, there's a lot of really good tools on the market. So, you know, you know, in that breath, I'm not saying I dislike the other tools. I think there's phenomenal tools on the other tools available as well. I just think that one worked really well for me. There's many fabulous tools, but most of them take a little bit longer to learn. So... Um, the being able to react quickly and then build on your learning using Storyline is why I like it too. Absolutely. The, um, the, I saw Laura's question about OneNote, um, and OneNote there is a license per user. Laura, there's you know I I'm, I think it depends on you know are you are you buying a 2013 license a 2010 you know of course the prices at you know <laughs> vary you know if you, are you buying the you know entire suite you know the home and office suite. You know, so then it, it comes as part of that package. Um, but if you were to buy just one note for whatever reason and you were not, you know, purchasing, you know, the entire suite for whatever reason, I think it's, you know, under a hundred dollars. Yeah, I think it's seventy five bucks for sixty to seventy five yeah. bucks. Yeah, it's it's reasonable. Um, I did learn the hard way that um, if you have people in your office who some of them are on Microsoft Office two thousand and seven and Microsoft Office two thousand and ten for whatever reason, Microsoft decided that those two OneNote programs, 07 and 10, would not communicate. Mm -hmm. I so, heard that too from somebody recently. It's called an upgrade. Right, exactly. <laughs> it, one person upgrades, um, surprise, yep. everyone's upgrading. Everybody's got upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a, they call it a simple migration path. It's just, yeah. You have no choice. It's very simple. Yeah. <laughs> so they built no legacy um, look back. Um, interface in with the no. 2010? It'll convert it, but it won't um, It won't let you access it directly. Right. right, so once you convert it to 2010, so, so if, you're, if you have you know, information that you were working on in 2007, and then you were going to 2010, you can, you can like Rick said, you can change the format. But if you're using 2007, you can't see the 2010 <laughs> material. Now, of course, I haven't checked to see if it's the same way in 2013. I, you know, I have 2013 on, on my new laptop that I got, and I have not tried to hook up I mean, with anybody. It's another, it's another upgrade time. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, I would be surprised if they did that again. I'm sure they got a lot of negative feedback on that. Sure. They probably did. Yeah, there's, they've been so good at making um, version upgrades for Word and PowerPoint work, so I'm really surprised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their, their later tool... Uh, and their toolbox is not treated the same way for upgrades. That's interesting. Right. And a fail, I think. But I'm sure they got the feedback, no doubt. Right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and that music means, Lisa, you survived this show. <laughs> oh, good. Yay! We are, we are at the end of the show, 36 minutes, 37 minutes into it. And Lisa, we really appreciate you coming on today. I think you need to come on again and let's continue the dialogue a bit because I know we got distracted on about 10 different subjects, but uh, okay. as you talk about distractibility, we can get distracted in seconds. So it doesn't take every much. Week. Yeah. <laughs> but we do. Best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. I'm so glad you were here. Thank you for having me. It was wonderful yeah, being on. We appreciate on. it. Thanks. And we'll see you in DevLearn in a couple months from yes, now. Yes, in, in MLearnCon, I'm right? sorry, not DevLearn, but the uh, MLearn. We'll see you then well, soon. I'll see, I'll see you at both. How about both? That sounds good. We Let's will be there both. at both. Okay. And Dawn will try to get her to one of those. I'll try to make DevLearn. I'll try. You'll have fun there. It's a good show. It's, it's actually a really good Dawn. show. It's a fantastic show. It's so much fun. I mean, just to be there with the energy and... Yeah. You know, all those thought leaders, it's a blast. And the Aria's, Aria's I did gorgeous. I invited last year, so I'm sure she'll help me this year, too. Yeah, and the Aria's really pretty. Nice hotel. It nice nice really convention pretty. area. They have great customer service. I actually spoke with them on the phone a few times, yeah. so that's good feedback, too. Yep, they're good. Yes. Well, anyway, thanks, you guys, for being in the chat room. And if you are watching the show, please subscribe. Tell us what you think. Give us feedback. We appreciate it. So we'll see you all next week on eLearn Chat. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Hi, Thank you. Thank you.